Scott Miller, welcome to my top performance blog. I am here with a person that I consider a friend, a mentor, and an inspiration, a magician, Chicago-based magician, Louis Carrion. Hi, Louis. Hi, how's it going? Hey, thanks for taking the time to do this with me. No, thank you so much for having me. You know, Louis performs all over the country on TV. He does stints routinely at the Magic Castle, and I feel so lucky to have him within my orbit. I reached out and I said, hey, could we do a, uh, an interview about how you practice? And he responded very, very uh, quickly. So I, I don't think I've ever seen you without a deck of cards in your hand. Well, maybe right now. You know, right. but I can see that it's sitting there right on the screen. Yeah, right here. <laughs> where, where does that come from? Where does that vision come from? And I guess first, do you agree with what I'm saying? Yeah, I can, I can definitely agree with that. I, I think part of it, I, I think uh, part of that has helped me it's the fact that I've, I also work at different magic shops throughout the years, you know, just being around that environment, seeing, you know, the type of clients that we get at the shop and people and what they're always looking for. And, and, and just seeing that uh, there's really no, there's no, they don't try to be original with their stuff. It makes me think, well, if, if 20 people come in, they buy this trick, then all these 20 people are going to do the same. So I need to find a different way of approaching it. You're constantly practicing. Can you tell us a little bit about where that comes from and how you organize your time and think about practice? Yeah, I, th I think uh, I'm always constantly practicing because, well, first of all, I'm always looking for different, uh, different effects that I can learn, right? I feel like I'm never, uh, I'm never satisfied with what I'm doing. And so you're the kind of person who is never settling in a way. Right. You, you, you don't arrive, you're always looking for, and do the audiences play a role in pushing you in some way? I, I, I think I'm very hard on myself. I, I think part of it is that if I do a show and, and the show went well, but then if, if I hear someone or uh, just say something, you know, that was kind of neat, but uh, I think I like the other thing better. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want the other thing to be better. I think I want everything to be just as good as the other thing. So at that moment, at that moment I'll probably just stop and then, probably get that effect that I'm doing in the show, get it out of the show, and then just find something else that will take its place. So um, I think I'm, I'm very critical with like just listening to the audience, and uh, I think it's almost a little bit too hard on myself sometimes, you know? <laughs> Those critiques that you, it sounds like, actively listen for when you're milling about uh, with the audience post-show, they actually motivate you because it could be discouraging to people. Right. Well, I, I think part of it is I just want to, I mean, I feel like that all the times magicians, we learn tricks that we like, you know? And, and I think we always forget about the, the, the point of our job is to actually learn, learn how to do tricks that are catered for our audiences, you know? I think a lot of times we, we get focused on, oh, I, I like this, I'm gonna do it because I like it. Right. They might find it boring, but I like it. So I, I think I'm always just constantly finding uh, effects just to please them, you know. Hmm. I mean, I, I I get a kick out of performing them, but it's always about pleasing them. You've always struck me as a very humble person in terms of, but when then you watch you work, your humility and your person is at such stark contrast for me to your skill. How do you yeah. put those two things together, or can you? It's tough, you know. I I think I I learned. Um, I I, I think what what it got drilled in my head it was that. Uh, it, it was this phrase, the moment, it, it was something like, the moment that you stop being humble, that's the moment that you stop learning, huh. you know? Because then, uh, then at that moment, you just feel like, you know, you can do anything, you know? And, 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 and magic, you're always, you're always a student of magic, you're always learning all the time, even if you think you're ready, you're not really ready, there's a lot more and more to discover. But it's a, uh, sometimes it's a little tricky trying to balance being humble, and then sometimes it's hard to balance like when, you, when you're like, oh, that was good. <laughs> you know, but then you gotta try to bring them to the same level, so you, you know. Uh, uh, but yeah, it's it's. Uh, I mean, you always want to be part of your work too, you know. Yeah. And how much time do you, would you say you spend? And maybe this is even a problem the way I ask it. But if you, if I had to guess, or if you had to say, how much time you spend sort of rehearsing, practicing, thinking about magic? What would what would you tell us? You know, I I, I, I spend I spend a lot of time. Of course, not just. You know, because a lot of times people think that just practicing magic and just sitting down on the table and shuffling cards for hours or working on moves and that sort of thing. Um, I, I, I find myself that in, in a way I'm, all, I'm, I'm always constantly working on, on something in my head. Either, either I'm, I'm, listening, I'm always listening to music just to find 
like the next piece of music that I'm going to use for the show, or if I listen to a song, the first thing that pops in my head is like, well, that song is nice. How can I incorporate it into my magic? What what can what what kind of effect can go with that? Or or if I hear a, a or if I think of a funny presentation, I'm always thinking about um, what kind of jokes can I use that will fit me, you know? Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, I mean, one thing is just rehearsing with the table, but it's like if I'm walking on the store doing grocery shopping, I'm just thinking in my head. I'm spacing out what what I'm you know what am I going to be working on up to the point that I forget my groceries, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but what you're saying is there isn't a clear division that you make between practice and your and performance. You're constantly reworking these ideas, looking for integrating things from other areas of your life. Yeah, and, and, and it happens often, like, you know, we'll be, you know, me and my girlfriend will be driving somewhere and, and, and then she'll see me all spacing out. She's like, what's going on? I'm thinking of a trick. <laughs> <laughs> and it happens pretty often, yeah. And so, Lewis, would you favor us with some small piece of, of what you're working on right now, anything? Well, sure. You know, I, I'll show you guys uh, something that uh, I don't normally do uh, in normal situations because I usually don't have a table to work a lot of the times, unless I'm doing a stage show, okay? But, but here, here it is, like, actually some, uh, you know, a lot of people know me for card tricks. Yes, that's, <laughs> so I do that's right. Like, I, do a, I do a lot of other things, okay? And uh, this is actually one of my favorite things that uh, the first time I saw it just blew my mind. I always wanted to do it, and now I can't. So, uh, we have this little box, okay? Yeah. Uh, people actually call it the devil's box. You know, I don't know why, okay? And then we have some different dice, okay? Yeah. So, uh, you can roll them. It gives you different numbers, okay? And mm-hmm. uh, here's where we're going to take yeah, the dice. One goes inside the box. You're going to get trapped in there, okay? And uh, one goes in this corner, the other one goes in this corner. Uh, the goal is to actually cover the dice in a second and actually try to make him jump. So uh, we're going to start with this one. we just cover it. And that fast, that one jumps. Now watch this one over there. We'll just give it a little cover and that one jumps. This one will also jump here. And of course, the last one in the box will also jump. Then you have nothing. And that's one, two, three, and four. <laughs> Lewis, thanks uh, so much for talking with me today. My pleasure. And best of luck during these difficult times. Stay healthy. And we look forward to seeing you back in front of an audience soon. Well, thank you so much. and. Uh, uh, Thank you so much for inviting me, and uh, we hope to see you soon too, okay? I guess I saw her standing there With her eyes and with her